der hat Bayer Leverkusen, our Bundesliga Champions. Ole, 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 ole. Ja, imagine that. Hi and welcome to the German Fußball Podcast and for this very special episode because that Bayer Leverkusen are Bundesliga champions. Ole, 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 ole. Yeah, imagine that. I mean, after 11 times we've seen the Bayern player being showering in beer in uh, after the games, drenched. They are drenching each other. I, I, I practice that word today. I've been a part with myself and Dortmund one. I was drenched. They tried to do all journalists as well. I saw our friend Archie was hiding around with players doing interviews while they were doing that. It, it's a tradition. But it's unbelievable, Marcus. Uh, so many rounds. There are five rounds to go in the Bundesliga. And Bayer Leverkusen have won the, the Schale. Because if we cite a trophy, it's a funny trophy, isn't it? Because a trophy is more or less a plate. A big plate that you can serve vegetable or or uh, or today Würzchen or uh, sausage on, but I mean what they did today as well, Marcus. I know that you've had a mixed weekend because your Arsenal, beloved Arsenal, just lost. And we we tape uh, recording this after the loss against Aston Villa at home. But this game, Marcus, I sat down, prepared for everything, knew that we will do a special episode if Leverkusen won. So the first thing I see is the starting line for Alonso. No Florian Wirtz, no Patrick Schick, no Frimpong, no nobody. I mean, there's no one around to, to play. And Grimaldo, I mean, none of them are there. But you just have that feeling, and that is the best feeling you can have in the world as a player, yeah. that your talisman, your leader, your coach, Whatever he does, he will end up on the right side. So you just you just felt that one. And and for the new ones who haven't noticed, Leverkusen won 5 0 Florian Wirtz came on in the 40, uh, in second half. He scored three goals in 22 minutes. Well, Alonso, King Alonso, Sabi Alonso Ale, they call uh, unofficially now the road going up to Bay Arena. I got a feeling, Marcus that that Ale is going to be called that in the future too. But you mentioned that what makes it so impressive is the fact that as they, they've never won the Bundesliga in their history, it's a team that we've kept saying this, it's a team that has been labeled never, never Kuzin because they're, they're perennial seconds. They, they don't win. And then for context, Sabalonzo comes in in October 2022. They are second to last at five points in eight games. 18 months later, they're Bundesliga champions. But what makes it all the more impressive is that there hasn't been an instance throughout this entire season in which they've looked weak, in which they've crumbled. It's as if it's the most, most natural thing in the world. And being the most well-deserved Bundesliga champions, I can, I can imagine. They're still undefeated. I'm sure that will be driving them for the rest of the season. But it's just been so solid that. And it's been solid despite having, like you say today, your key players out, despite the fact that when they, when it came to AFCON, you had three or four key starters, despite the fact that one of your best players for the first half of the season, Victor Boniface, got a serious knee injury. Despite all that, Sabah Alonso just exuded the most control ever. Seems like he's been at the helm for decades. And here they are, Bundesliga champions, five leagues before. They got a cup final to play at the end of next month. They're in the Europa League uh, quarterfinals after beating West Ham 2-0 on the first leg. I mean, on a, you are on lost a for words. Yeah, but we'll never lost for words, Marcus. I know, <laughs> but enough, I'm going yeah, yeah. to do, do the challenge of doing the history of Bayer Leverkusen in two minutes. Bayer Leverkusen, this is their story. There is a guy called Bayer who around, I think it was 1891, he looked for a place to put his factories. He bought... A, a place, an industrial area from a guy called Leverkus. True stories. It sounds like it's funny, but it's not. So he, this is so far away from 
everything. This is not in a city. It's just in the middle of nowhere. So what they understand, what buyer understand, is that he needs to attract people to work for him. So they're good to be good at culture. They got to good got to be good at sport. So in 1903, there's some guys coming around and say, "Listen, can you support us to make a sport and a sport So in 1904. Bayer Leverkusen 1904. That's the name of the club. Bayer Leverkusen 1904. That's the founding year. So then they start the club and it's called the Werks Elf, which means the Works Eleven. So this is the team. This is more like the factory team. So, so this place grows. It gets bigger and bigger, this industrial arena. So in the 1930, it's called a city, and the city is called Leverkusen. So now we fast forward, fast forward. Bayern is doing well. Bayern, the fabric, the factories are doing well. But they never win anything. They are so good at so many things, this club. They are solid. They got the best people. Of course, everything would eat, move, sleep. They are the best because they are Bayern. Everybody will have a cream a Bayern in, in their bathroom. So they win a cup. Fine. They win a UEFA Cup. Fine. They have some of the best coaches in the world, but they can never win the league. So in 01, 02, after they done great recruiting, if you saw today in the stands, you had Reiner Kalman there. He was a sports manager for ages. He was the guy who went to DDR in East Germany. You got Andreas Thorm, Ulf Kirsten. The government said you can't take Matthias Sommer as well because it's not fair that you take everybody. So Matthias Sommer went somewhere else. Later, he took Rudy Fuller in, as you saw in the stand today as well. They took him in as a sporting director. He's been there for ages. But here we are. 01-02 season. Now we have the chance. The only thing we got to do is to go to Unterhaching outside Bayern. If we win that game, we will win the championship and Bayern will be second. Of course, what's happening is that they lose. They lose two against Unterhaching. Later that evening, Unterhaching put themselves in the bus, went into Bayern and celebrated with them. It was a surprise for everybody. Okay, so they lose the cup, but it's the big one left. I think it's in Glasgow. But that game will be remembered for one thing, is that volley goal from Zinedine Zidane. And they lose that final. So they lose three finals. They lose the final in the Bundesliga, lose the final in the German Cup, and lose the Champions League final. Then they got the name Neverkusen. Wiesekusen, second, you know. And they've had that image all the time. That have annoyed them so big time. But now, there are three key figures, Marcus, that took them into this. Yes, 5th of October 2022, Alonso came. They were hopeless behind. 18 months Later, they won the Deutsche Bundesliga. The three key, key people, we know Alonso. We've talked about um, Simon Rolfes, who was a captain there for many, many years. And then you have the CEO called Caro. He's from Barcelona. He's been there. Very good to systemize. Very good to run a football club. And here we are. Sunday, when we are recording this, Bayer Leverkusen have won the Deutsche Meisterschaft. Five, five rounds before the end of the season. A bit longer than two minutes, Marcus, but I think I, I got the big, the big one. Uh, in yeah, there. but you, you touched upon uh, my, my next question. I was going to ask you, it's a broad question, but how they do it, right? Because uh, Leverkusen been a team, if we go way back from the history in terms of being good in recruiting Brazilian players, generally being good recruiting good young players, always been a team full of energy um well you saw today in my dear arsenal you had both a, a leon dale um a leon bailey and a diaby who played for leverkusen these type of players that are very good players susceptible to goals on the counter played a bit naive perhaps um and kind of there in a round where Bo dortmund leipzig are and then they take that final step just reflecting on sort of you mentioned key key individuals key players even why this year for Bayer Leverkusen that what do you what 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 springs to mind as some of the kind of the the the, the key moments so to speak for for this uh, yeah for the Bundesliga champions now 
I think to, to win something, to have success as a club, you have to be good in very many different areas. You can have one season that every go, but thing goes from himself. I remember when, when Sir Alex in his last season had Van Persie, I, I won't remind you on, on that one, when he kind of got a striker who certainly scored 30, 40 goals, they won all these games. But if you, sit, if, you, if, you, if you go through the elements that you need to have to have success, you will say, if you have a good organized club, check. You have to have a solid club in terms of finances. It's not like you have all the money in the world, but you know that you can get a good team together. You, you need to have human humans around in key positions. I was speaking about Caro, Rolfes, and Alonso. You have to have a recruit system. You said it. Leverkusen will be good at that, but they have even improved it now. If you go through it, they sold the Abbey to, uh, to Aston Villa. Got some money, reinvested the money, got Boniface, took a chance on him, around 20 million. Teja, that was the most expensive player, 23. Uh, Hoffman for around 10. Grimaldo, zero, zero. And I will not, in respect to Köln, talk about the moment where they took Florian Wirtz from Köln's under, uh, under 17 team, I think. And they had a gentleman's agreement that they shouldn't take each other players because Köln and Leverkusen are very close to each other. I won't even mention that. So you have done that. Shaka. And, and, and yeah, but last but not least, Shaka. I think that was a very untypical signing of Leverkusen because uh, they were signing talent from South America, different ta- t- take early talent. Like Ta has been there for many years, but now he's like fulfilled his potential. And then you got that these players are brought in to fill a defined uh, role, position at the club that Alonso, together with, I, I guess, especially uh, Simon Rolfes, have said, this is what we need. So you need another striker next to Patrick Schick. Well, you saw when they were going away, injuries, you need them to get going. You need a Shaka to kind of be the guy in the middle who is running the show. Hoffman, great player in the way he very intelligent, always a loyal to, to all kind of system. Boniface, I mean, he had two crucial ligaments, Mark has done. Mm-hmm. And uh, a special thing for Norwegians, uh, apparently, I, I, I just saw that in a tweet that passed me, uh, a Norwegian guy who said uh, last time he was at Budeglim, he made them win the championship for the first time in 100 years mm-hmm. uh, too. So, so we know Boniface uh, in Norway, and I think one of the key games, Marcus. I was, I have, I've only seen Leverkusen in the Bundesliga uh, live once, and that was at Bayern and Allianz. Remember that game? It was an unbelievable game. There was a period where Bayern were good, Leverkusen were good. I think that those kind of key moments when when Leverkusen feel, wow, we can use our strategy, we can use our way of playing football. Our balanced way that Alonso tried to, to 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 make us do, we can also do this away from home. I'm not saying that it's the only game because they have shown Marcus a moral and an attitude that's been unbelievable, not only in the Bundesliga but also in the European Cup where they've come from behind in in the last minutes. And you've always felt as you did with Liverpool today, Marcus. I was watching the game, that game too against Crystal Palace. I think they've taken 27 points after being down, coming back. And you always had that feeling that they will do that at Crystal Palace as well and they had enough chances. Why do I say that? Because that hasn't happened to Leverkusen yet. You just feel that. We, we saw the Mainz game. We saw all kinds of games at home where they were down and then they scored in the 88th. But OK, OK, we get a point. No, 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 let's go for three points. So that just shows you there's a fantastic attitude uh, uh, in the team. And a lot of this need to go back to Alonso because you can't say that he has a good balance in the team. Just talk about Tamar because as a centre half, he has been there, he's done his job, he's been a good lad to. I've interviewed him a couple of times, good lad in all time. No, he looks like the hope of German football going into the Euros. He has sorted the problem for centre halves mm-hmm. in there, you know? Yeah. So, so, so I think there's a lot of factors, but they, I think Leverkusen at the moment checks. Checks out the most of them. 
Yeah, it, and you've you've touched upon it, but it certainly is a, a team in which has a very clear, defined idea of how to to play in terms of the the positioning of 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 how they of how they play themselves out with the with the with the two um, the holding two there, which Sabi Alonso really emphasizes and and wants as part of the team, and then you got the back three and the way in which he has that idea of how to play, but at the same time. You don't do not become champions without that sort of mental fortitude. And for us that have been following it closely, that the amount of games in which Leverkusen have come late from behind to get a result, obviously that will have a sort of a a um, a reinforcing effect over the course of a season. We remember when they came back from the from the uh, in the in the Rukunda with. Close games against. I remember in Augsburg where they win late. I think through through Frimpong as well. We cannot underestimate what those things do. A, a late equalizer on penalties, a way, a way to Bayern, a Palacios there, keeps their unbeaten streak going. These le, Coming back against uh, um, Leipzig away as well, it has a so, sort of reinforcing effect. And you've been in that in changing rooms as a, as a, as a player, as a manager, as a coach. And, and that sort of belief, self-belief that develops from each one of those games. And this team has just grown and grown over the course of a season. And how lucky we are that we get to see this team continue growing into next season with the same manager, with a, another year of experience, with two more uh, trophies to compete for as well. It'll be fun because then we get to see them at the highest level in the Champions League as well. Um, so I guess there's all there all there is is to congratulate Bayer Leverkusen and for us German football fans, for the neutral, of course, to see Bayern's uh, reign end. But boy, did it end with a worthy replacement, I say. And I think, not that Bayern won't be disappointed, but at least there is that to to consider uh, for any for any Bayern fan listening at the very least. Yes, Marcus, and we said we should be quick and sharp, so I will, I will go in for landing here. But I'm just saying that uh, there is a lot of things, and you touch upon it here, because there is, you just feel when you see this season, everything worked out when, when he... When he, he didn't play, in, we played another starting eleven. Okay, then it succeeded that guy. Uh, uh, all were going to the Africa Cup and Asia Cup, and what did he do? The last game before everybody went, he took them out anyway. So that was no panic. Uh, and I think that the N word will have to be that when you see this Bayer Leverkusen team, you see Xabi Alonso, you see how they act. You see how they are filled with attitude, want to have the ball, but still pragmatic. There is no, yes, we play out from the back, but we then don't just play out from the back just because we have to do it. We do it for a purpose. You can see that all along. You can also see a team that never goes into uh, panic modus. They are always there. And I guess that the consequence is that's why they're winning games at the end, because you can't see Alonso coming in and have a go at them. He will, he will always be constructive, as he was as a player, as he was as a captain of a team. And he, he is at the club now where people in and around him will support him. And that's why I think the key to every team is when you see, you can see when it's positive, that they mirror the, the coach. So a big, big congratulations to Bayer Leverkusen, a club that we've followed for many, many years. I've had a... I've been fortunate enough to play at Bayer and I've been fortunate to, to beat Leverkusen, score against Leverkusen. But, I mean, that I will one day see them winning the German Bundesliga five rounds before the end of, of the, the season. That is so much respect. And I can also saw, I saw a tweet from, from Thomas Müller saying, congratulations, deserved. And wow, we can just start by looking forward to next season, Marcus, because FC Revenge in Munich, they will go for it. So, fantastic that we have this uh, a champion like Bayer Leverkusen as a neutral. Uh, we thought that's going to be Dortmund, but they managed, didn't manage to slow, uh, beat Mainz last season. We thought that there could be Leipzig, but they were taking away the coach and the players. And at the end of the day, it was to be Bayer Leverkusen. Bayer Leverkusen, 1904. 100 years after they were founded. It's an amazing story. <laughs>